one barrel of oil, the refined product of which, 42 gallons of gasoline you can buy for a little over $100, uh, will produce as much energy, as much work, as you will get from 12 people working all year for you. Take a, an average man performing physical labor for 25,000 hours to produce the amount of energy that's contained in that one barrel of oil. That barrel of oil, if it's pulled out of the ground in Iraq, can be pulled out of the ground for one dollar. You invest a dollar and you get back 25,000 hours of human labor. That is so, that's the energy source that is so dense, it's essentially free energy. It's all non-renewable, it's all extremely capital intensive, and it's probably the most invaluable rot natural resource we've ever discovered. Seventy percent of the barrel of oil is refined into transportation fuels, which include motor gasoline, diesel fuel, jet fuel, railroad fuel, and maritime fuel. Ninety-eight percent of all transportation energy comes from oil. Construction of an average car consumes somewhere between the energy equivalent of 27 and 54 barrels of oil, depending on whose statistics you use. Uh, a computer, the construction of the average desktop computer, consumes 10 times its weight in fossil fuels. A microchip consumes 630 times its weight in fossil fuels during its construction. For every calorie that you eat in the United States, and probably a similar number in other industrialized nations, requires 10 calories of hydrocarbon energy. There are 6.4 billion people, I think, living on the planet now. Um, most of them are reasonably well-fed, and that's a consequence of what, what was called the Green Revolution in the second half of the 20th century. The Green Revolution consists in very large measure of fertilizing land with petrochemicals, fertilizers that are derived from petroleum. Farming has changed more in the last 50 years than it did in the previous thousand. A farmer today can work five times the land his father worked and still have time for leisure that his father never knew. The petroleum that runs these modern hired hands has not confined progress in farming to the fields. Life is easier for the farm wife, too. What it comes down to is that the oil industry has to please Mrs. Martin and millions just like her. Already today, she's used some 87 petroleum products, including the plastic bacon wrapper and the wax of the milk cotton. She'll top 100 before the day is over. The liquids that come out of oil as it's processed and refined create the building block for all of our petrochemical, chemical, plastics, pharmaceutical, these, you know, zillions of things. Fires, insecticides, cosmetics, weed killers, a whole galaxy of things to make a better life on Earth. And you know, it isn't just oil companies that try to outdo each other competing for the customer's dollar. The same story is true of almost every successful business enterprise on the whole planet. Well, whether you know it or not, every single preparation on this beautiful lady's dressing table, every single thing she is wearing, is influenced by oil. Just for fun, let's take away all these articles dependent upon petroleum. Her hand mirror, cosmetics, perfume, and manicure set made of plastics. Her synthetic silk negligee, her silk under... Oh, science can go no further. coming to the end of the first half of the age of oil. During this 150 years, we have seen the growth of everything. 
of industry, transport, trade, agriculture. We've seen an explosion of the number of people. All of this was made possible by the cheap, abundant supply of oil-based energy. Today, Papua New Guinea hardly uses any oil. There's probably two or three islands in the South Pacific that don't use any oil. Everybody else is hooked on trying to create a society that looks like us. The demand for energy is rising faster than was predicted even five years ago. So people all around the world can see the way the developed countries of the world live and how a good a life the people have in those areas. So they want to emulate us. They want to be able to drive cars. They want to live in nice houses. They want to have air conditioning and refrigeration. And, and why shouldn't they? China is not about to have a hard landing. They're exponentially expanding their need for energy. And they're just getting started. Most urban Chinese believe that they will own a car within five years. It's the fastest growing automobile market on Earth. Something like a third of them already have driver's licenses. Uh, and so the demand for oil and for gasoline in, uh, in China uh, is really going to take off. Last year, China increased their importation of oil by 25%. They're now the number two importer in the world. They increased their use of oil. I read a figure of 14.7%. I don't know how you get that precise. Uh, but that's very consistent with an economy that's growing at 10% a year. And by the way, a 10% growth rate doubles in seven years, four times bigger in 14 years, and they're requiring more and more energy. China and India are kind of getting to the party when the glass is ha literally half empty at this point. So they're going to have to fight with the rest of us to, uh, to get what's left. Well, we are a role model whether we like it or not. We use 25% of the world's oil. We're only one person in 22. We have only 2% of the known reserves of oil. We are profligate users of energy, but we will go on doing that so long as we're rich and the energy is cheap. We pay more for a bottle of drinking water than we do for, for gasoline. Gasoline is just about the cheapest liquid you can buy in the United States, and as long as that's true, uh, Americans are not going to be concerned. For service that is tops, and gas that's extra fine, there's a smile for every mile at the S.O. sign. E-S-S-O makes your car go. Happy motoring. I've taken this time span here from 5,000 years ago to the present to 5,000 years in the future. Now, what we call recorded history began about 5,000 years ago. So what this shows is that this Washington Monument-like spike here is the episode of the fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas, and every other kind of fossil fuel in human history. Mm. It's the most disturbing thing that's ever happened to the human species. It's responsible for our technological society, and in terms of human history, it's a very brief epoch.